Welcome everybody, today with a build video, the 2cm Flak 38 late production with trailer. This is one of the really really nice tracking kits, some small project that goes together fine. And why the heck does this even matter buying or building a Flak? Well this weaponry was installed in many variations and vehicles, basically all reconnaissance vehicles were fielded with this one. And it deserves a standalone kit, since it ties in with the Flak Panzer 1. I'm building next. This goodie box is one of the reasons why I do like dragon kits. At least some of them are equipped with one. Here we have pre bent gun shields and a lot of photo edge for such a small project. Let's see how it goes. This one is really highly detailed and there are a lot of weld seams that look like yeah just some mold seams but no they are detailed so we have to be a little bit careful when cleaning the model kit up. There are some differences between the early and the late production of the Flak 38. This seat, for example, is a little bit more simplified. We get a different receiver and some more yeah, easy, simplified hand wheels on the late production. The Flak 38 itself is then again a development based on the Flak 30, and the Flak 30 has about half the fire rate compared to the Flak 38. You would have to really dive deep into these anti-aircraft guns to make out the differences. Said so much, there are a lot of companies producing them. They were produced during the complete time of wartime from 1939 on as the Flak 38. And yeah, the differences are so minor, I would not expect anyone to make this out or even nail it down to a manufacturer. Track and supply some pre-bent photo edge here. And yes, I go for the photo edge. My goal for this build is building up every bit and piece made from photo edge that is included. And with the bending machine, the first part was absolutely no challenge. What is a challenge, however, is the pre bent parts are not bent into the correct shape. They need to be readjusted using the plastic ones as guidance. In this clip, I'm still using super glue to attach photo edge onto photo edge. This is fine for photo edge to plastic and the other way around. But when it comes to handling photo edge itself, there is a better variant, a better technique, and this is using the soldering iron. For this time, I still use what I have laying around for years now for fooling around with Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, and microelectronics. Yeah, this is a simple Chinese made 48 watt soldering iron and the wattage is not exactly where we would need it to deal with large photo edge pieces. I will adjust my equipment according to what I learned in this project. I can say it works better than super gluing it since the tin creates a much stronger bond photo edge piece to photo edge piece and it can be used to fill the gaps. The cleanup is more easy to do and yeah overall you can basically by applying heat or <laughs> not applying heat you can adjust how well the parts are adjustable before they settle down permanently. And even the permanent bond is not permanent at all. Heat and soldering flux will make it soft again and allow for some micro adjustment. But of course the parts are very very hot and I was given the advice using a small miniature blowtorch for the whole job. That's not possible due to my cardboard backdrop. We would have the whole studio and bench on fire. No that's not an option. But yeah there are still so usable results so far and I can recommend everybody to just try it out if the possibility exists and the equipment is already there. In the future videos coming up with the next projects we will see my equipment being adjusted and then is, that's the point where I can give recommendations. Getting rid of some of the solder either by using a file or sanding paper or you can heat it up and extract it with desoldering braid and the addition of soldering flux. For attaching some parts like these butterfly nuts here, I preferred to pre-solder the parts, get some tin on them and then just heat them up, spot heat them, they will adhere. There are some limits I discovered. 
these small o-rings for example i had to use super glue in the microscope to get them into place yeah that was just too small of a detail for my soldering iron and my skills and if you question yourself why i why the heck i went for the <laughs> photo edge in the first place dragon made some compromises to get the six millimeter thick armor plating for this gun shield um, they tapered the edges and this is something that looks completely funny uh, altering the shape of a metal blade just to get it thin enough the photo edge was a nice addition here the assembly of the subcomponents was straightforward dragon gives us i think three or four different options for the gun elevation these are pre-lengthened parts that get swapped out to yeah, show the mechanism the details in a accurate way i decided to go for zero degrees or ground level just in case i want to attach this gun on its trailer behind a vehicle at some point in the future or want to display it used by infantry in a ground fighting scenario even so this is not very effective <laughs> at all but yeah let's move on there are different styles of visors included the early the late one together with the ground fighting scope and it's really hard to nail down what actually belongs on this variant because the crew was not happy with the late version and often swapped them out or they got lost yeah if you don't want something it gets lost basically so i settled just for something different than what i would like to use on the flak panzer for example now let's move on into the trailer it is highly detailed again and a lot of small plastic pieces to adjust and stick together it's just lovely this kit we can build this trailer in the parking position or in a towing position i have not yet a vehicle to tow it behind so i go for the parking position for now and this kind of works it looks nice and the yellow one you see appearing here on the left is the one from tristar or hobby boss nowadays and yeah tristar hobby boss they are having the same kit available it's part of the flak panzer one that is coming up and i would like to compare it a little bit it is yeah it can't hold up against a dedicated dragon kit there's always a bigger fish in the tires for example the mini art ones are still much more detailed than the dragon ones i used here for example but now the trailer is finished it looks really nice i think detail is very good but we need to move on into the final steps and one of them is for sure toying around with the <laughs> build model kit the trailer can pick up the gun that's what i would like to test out test fit demonstrate it's a little bit um, real heavy it needs to be attached to a base or something like this it just looks nice the whole thing can be picked up can be used on the trailer or on a vehicle the whole thing is yeah, basically very versatile in this case no, the actual real challenge for the last step is this shell catching basket. Dragon wants us to build a 3D object with a slope out of a 2D mesh wire. And this is something not only hard to film, but not that easy to achieve, at least for me. The lining for this basket here for the upper section was quite easy. Just glue it on and then going around adjusting the actual shape putting everything into place this was not really that challenging but still it needs to be dry fitted and lined up well to fit later on to the model once it is glued to the frame it's not that hard to adjust the final shape and glue the fitting piece on top of it the actual problem is more or less how to hold the thing in the first place. If dealing with photo edge, it's a lot of, or my experience is dealing with photo edge, it's a lot of part holding issues, how you can actually manipulate the whole thing without crushing it or with it falling down on the floor. Yeah, that is still, I'm on the transitioning point into these little bit more challenging parts the lower part of the basket was preformed and the transition area from the upper into the lower one has to be 
banned. I was not able to film this in a meaningful way, I'm sorry, but in the end it worked out, just gluing it all around the wireframe and then bending it into shape. One of the last pieces of photo edge that can be mounted are these hand wheels. They come injection molded as well as, as photo edge and I did find the injection molded ones even better detailed and within a better shape. And this is why I settled for the injection molded solution over the photo etched ones. Last step of course is cleaning up something like some sprue gates that were left over or I missed in the first place, spotted them on the images. And now I would like to go into comparing it a little bit, only a little bit with the TriStar one. The TriStar one will be fitted to a Flak Panzer one as a separate project, but it's included in the kit. This is why I can show you both. We have a little bit an earlier version with the more complicated seat in comparison to the Dragon one displaying the last version or late version. And the overall detail on the TriStar one is not on the same level, I have to say. But the differences are minor. I think it's here the best way to go having the TriStar one as a fitting addition to a vehicle in a diorama scene, whatever, and the Dragon one as a dedicated kit of the gun or the weaponry itself. TriStar has two lines, basically, the dedicated kit and the ones that is included within the Flak Panzer, for example. The Flak Panzer included one has geometrical issues. They solved this in their dedicated kits, but this is something I will adjust in the TriStar project, in the TriStar build. For now, I'm finished with the build of the Dragon Kit and in the next episode of this build, we will finish it completely. This was a little bit less progress than I would actually liked to have today, but I'm learning, started learning animating in Fusion, so a little bit of time had to be converted. I hope to see you guys next week when we get into the second part of the 3D printed tracks. See you then. Happy modeling!